Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. We actually have a lovely, quiet atmosphere for you guys today. This is the first podcast episode I'm doing after releasing my four episodes from the EVN show floor, which sounded great, but were naturally was very loud because there was oh, a lot of, of course. chatter in the background. And I have the lovely and the podcast virgin, Molly Stewart on. I'm so nervous. She's She's so nervous. She's um, she shouldn't be though, because on her way up here, Molly had a little confidence boost in the nature of a man, a stranger who just like handed her his number in the lobby, which, um, I don't even know what you look like, Mike. I, I didn't really see you. I'm sorry, <laughs> but like, I'll keep this and cherish it forever. So, so this guy like ran up to her in the elevator and handed her his number on a slip of paper saying, you're gorgeous. Like, call me. And she was so startled that she didn't really get a chance to see his face before the elevator door. I think he closed. had dark hair. I watched him walk away. I don't remember. Yeah. We'll never know. But we're also wondering about if this guy has some kind of slick method. Because, like, this is, like, cut, right? Yes. Like, it's not just ripped. Like, I think he just carries around, like, his name and number. On slips of paper. And just, like, gives them to people, like... Yeah. Just the blanket approach. Just like if I give out enough of these, yeah. maybe somebody will. Yeah. I mean, it's a numbers game then. Yeah, it which, is. So it's more personal a, than Tinder. <laughs> that's true. It's on. It, you almost have to admire his like ingenuity yeah. if that is the case. Because, yes, it's, it's hard to meet people, especially these days. Yeah. And having a collection of your number on pre-written on slips and also to – Coming up to a girl and just giving her your number without really cornering her and yeah. forcing her and to like talk to you. And then you leave so fast that she can't remember what you look like. <laughs> and so she's like, well, maybe I should text him because like, maybe he was cute. I, I don't remember. <laughs> like he could have been a gremlin, but I, I have no idea. I need to know. <laughs> the secret is to just get away as quickly as you can before the person she has an opportunity to look at your face. But it's like on one hand, it's kind of nice because it's like he didn't – barrage you he didn't like mm -hmm. give you know he didn't make you uncomfortable by like i said cornering I had you any of those yeah yeah i know you have it was nice but on the other hand it's also kind of like weird weird it's weird because it's also weird with the idea that he possibly has several of these in his pocket and just hands it out throughout the day it was a little weird mike i'm not gonna lie but it's okay <laughs> props for effort <laughs> so yeah i can't decide if it's like weird or it's cute or if it's just a sign of the times about how it's different these days dating and trying to meet yeah. people. Yeah. I think that a lot of people just don't really know how to talk to right. each other yeah. as much anymore, you know? So maybe it's, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't talk to a lot of people. So. Well, actually you kind of do. I kind of do. Because you are a cam star. Yeah, that's, that's true. So. I mean, but that's also, it's, it's one of those things also that's like online. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot different because there's not that face-to-face -face interaction most right. of the time. Most of the guys that I talk to on a daily basis, I have no idea what they look like. I've never met them in person. And it's like – I feel like that's something that the internet brought around is this like sense of anonymity where it's like nobody really knows who you are or what you look like if you're on like that member side. Right. So it's a lot easier to find the confidence to talk to people that maybe you wouldn't normally. Like, yeah. Just out in public. So Yeah. Which is scary, but also endearing. It's scary because I feel like we are becoming more and more disconnected as a society and, more, you know, face-to-face -face interactions becoming less less common. But is it also – because there's always people who have a hard time talking to other people. And there's yeah. always socially anxious guys and guys, you know, that frankly have a really hard time meeting women. Yeah. and Women that are the same way as well. Yeah. You know, it's like some people just don't really have that that confidence factor. Like I can talk to anyone because I just I don't care. <laughs> I'm just like, I know what I am. Like, I'm mm -hmm. weird. I'm kind of overbearing. Like, so if you don't like me, like that, that's fine. But I'm you're just going to deal with it until yeah. I walk away. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have the confidence to recognize that not everybody's going to like you. But obviously there will be people of course. who love you. And we don't need the world to love us. We no. just need a few select. Just need a few people. Except for me. I really need the world to love me, which is why I have this show. <laughs> I do too. That's why I do porn. Yeah, I just guess kidding. so. So we're just liars. We were, <laughs> Please love us. Please love us. I don't so know what camera to look at. Which camera? Love us. Oh, 
That one. Love me. Please love me. <laughs> Ernie's still fucking with the wide, taping my phone to, oh, God. That thing's going to come back with so much shit on it. Sorry, guys. We're trying out new, like, camera equipment today. So you should notice a higher quality of video if you are watching this on YouTube. But it is, it's got its kinks that we need to iron out. So, Molly, let's talk about you. How did you get started in camming? Because that's really where your whole career began. Yeah. Um, So I started camming. um, I... When I first started, right, um, I had r- no real job prospects. I was living out in California. I was um, 20, just about to turn 21. Um, I was working at Victoria's Secret. Um, they kept cutting back all of my shifts. Like, I was completely freaking broke. I was almost about to get evicted from my apartment. I was thinking I was going to have to move back home with my mom in Michigan and all this crazy stuff. And then um, uh, I also had joined the military, um, signed up to for basic training. Oh wow! Um, because I I didn't want to go back to Michigan, and right. I thought here's like this outlet. I had a really good ASVAB score. Um, you are like, insanely fit, by the way. Oh, thank you. And what kind of grade score did you have? I'm sorry. What kind of grade score did you just say you had? An ASVAB. Okay, I thought you said so it's ab like a, score, no. which I would agree with because your abs are spectacular. <laughs> but I, I feel like that's not what you meant. No, it's like a it's like a placement test, like SATs for the military, gotcha. kind of. Yeah. Okay. So, but yeah, so I was uh, going to do that. And then um, I needed to find some way to sustain myself, I guess, before I left for basic training. Um, and then I was totally not torrenting movies because I couldn't afford to buy any. <laughs> of course <laughs> you weren't. I got one of those little, like, Nobody ever steals no. content. Those of us who work in the porn industry know that better than anybody. I know. And it sounds so, like, shitty of me now because I'm like, how dare you guys steal my porn? Yeah. Oh, but I, I used to steal. <laughs> yeah, but um, I had one of those little pop ups like, "Oh my god, work from home makes like three thousand dollars a month," and I was like, "Fuck!" I was desperate, so yeah. I was just like, "All right, well, I'll try it." Um, I ended up starting on Flirt for free, um, but I was like through a studio, which I knew nothing about it, and but it was like through a studio, so they took part of my cut. But I also worked from home. I didn't work from a studio, so I was only making like twenty five percent of tips but oh, wow. even with that i the first two weeks that i cammed i made like twenty five hundred dollars wow even with the cut and so then i i you know met some members who told me about my free cams which is where i started after that um they have much better percentages and more interactive member base and stuff like that so um that's how i started that um i actually went into basic training um got my leg broken in really yeah in basic training so um i oh that's a long story um (laughs) you don't have to tell it yeah i'd rather not all right we won't go there (laughs) but um anyway so i had the choice to basically stay in med hold and um continue like after i was healed or whatever or the option to get out so i chose to get out um i was making more money with camming at that point anyway so and from there, I just kind of I started sticking to a schedule and um, I, I cammed a lot. Like I'm talking like 10 to 12 hour days, like every single day almost because I just wanted to really when I when I do something, I like to put absolutely everything that mm-hmm. I have into it. Like I'm just a very like. Focus oriented person, like I just like to get things done and I feel like if I'm going to do something I should put everything I have into it. Mm -hmm. So I started getting um, just like more regulars and, you know, building up through things. Um, And it was just a really great experience because I got to set my own schedule. I got to be creative and weird. Like I was homeschooled um, through all of junior high and high school and I was a weirdo. Like I had I had no friends. I'm still a weirdo. But (laughs) people on cam liked me despite the fact that like so many other people never had throughout my life. And it wasn't just because like, oh, I was getting naked and doing cum shows or whatever. Like I had a big group of people who we would just hang out and talk. I knew like about their lives. Um, like I knew what jobs they had. We would have real conversations and just be weird. Do you and think it was that fun. they felt they could relate to you? Because maybe, you know, we were talking earlier about often, I think a lot of people who do – frequent campsites and obviously mm-hmm. it doesn't apply to everybody, but you know, like they may have some social anxiety or, um, you know, not have a lot of experience mm-hmm. with women. Um, and you said that you, you know, 
seem to not be as social having been homeschooled and that kind yeah. of stuff. So do you think that like they could, I think that they felt like they could relate to you? Yeah, I think there definitely was that, especially when I first started camming. I like, I wouldn't say that I didn't have any confidence, but I also had no idea what I was doing like at all because I, I didn't lose my virginity until I was 18. Like mm-hmm. my sexual experiences were pretty much nothing until my early 20s. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that I kind of like grew with a lot of these people on cam like mm. as a person yeah um i have some members that i've known pretty much the entire time that i've been camming which is uh my seven year cam anniversary was just on the 11th so it's been wow. seven years so some people i've known for literally at least six if not that whole amount right. of time right so i think that um just because i am weird and i try to like i try to be inclusive of everyone like i understand like people can't always give me money they can't always tip but if you're there and we can have a fun conversation or just like do weird things together on Mm -hmm. cam that means more to me than like just having one guy who can just throw down and tip for everything and we don't really talk or do anything Mm -hmm. because at that point it's it more feels like work than actually like having fun and I mean it is a job I, I put a lot of effort into like, well, now more content creation. But even when I do cam, I try to make it a fun experience mm-hmm. for everyone. Because if I'm not having fun, they're not having fun. Right. And people go to cam to be entertained, mm-hmm. you know, or to have some form of entertainment. And they can tell if you're not enjoying yourself, right. you know. Yeah, no fans definitely have that that keen insight. <laughs> so you were talking about how you were camming for 10 to 12 hours a day. Yeah. Because I don't know a lot about the cam world, and it does fascinate me. What are you doing that whole time uh, a lot of the times it's it is literally just a lot of talking mm-hmm. like i've had i've had times before where i have basically just only gotten naked mm-hmm. and the rest of the time is just sitting there talking to people i also play games like i have like this giant jenga tower that's like this big and i like color code them and we play games like tipping games out of it mm-hmm. um i've done baked goods raffles like they'll buy raffle tickets at the end of the month like i pick a winner and i bake them whatever they want and i mail it to them mm. um i have <laughs> i have a tip that people can do to come deny me for 24 hours where i'm not allowed to to orgasm mm-hmm. and i have to wear an animal onesie and do weird dances like the ymca <laughs> <laughs> like just ran wait yeah. but do they have access to you for 24 hours or no it's it's an honor system but okay, but i don't you. do it so. right, right, right i believe you i believe you <laughs> speaking of 24 hours i feel like i remember that for one of your can anniversaries didn't you do a 24 hour mm-hmm. camming thing and i think yep. i remember seeing that on twitter and thinking this bitch is crazy yep i did that actually last year for my six year cam anniversary i was on for 24 hours and it was crazy and it was fun because like Part of the way through the day, I actually got my delivery from browsers where they gave me my browser shoes. Mm-hmm. So I got to open that and they like congratulated me on my my anniversary of cam. And um, it was next to impossible. I drank so much Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> like it got to a point where like halfway through the day, I didn't know what to do. And I felt like I was losing my mind. And I started just like cleaning my cam room. Uh-huh. on cam naked like yeah. that's just what I was doing was cleaning yeah like I was like seeing all these dust particles in my room and I was just like guys it's so dirty in here I need to clean it and I would like run and like go get cleaning supplies and they're like you need to stop cleaning your room like you are being really strange right now like are you okay <laughs> <laughs> my friend came over um Cosmic Neko I I came with her a lot she's one of my best friends and uh there was a big tip that they could do to pour a bucket of ice on me in the bathtub to wake me up and that was the most horrible thing. Oh god. That I had done that year. Oh my god. <laughs> it was so bad. How many did you only have to do that once? Only once. Okay, yeah. cuz someone had to pay a lot of money for that to happen to you. Yeah. And only one person did it. Yes. And did you like sort of quasi hate that person? I mean, or... kind of, but it was a good tip and it did wake me up. Yeah, <laughs> so, I bet it so did. So that was good. I bet it did. <laughs> but I was just like, "Oh my god, why did I even offer this?" <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Well, I guess it's entertaining for people. It is, yeah, and that's that's all what it is. You know, it's having fun. That's why, like, even things that are silly, like making me do weird dances, or I've had before people just start tipping for me to put on clothes. So mm-hmm. I've had points where I'm wearing like four pairs of socks mm-hmm. and gloves and like five hats and like a parka, mm-hmm. and like, it, and it's just weird. But as long as people are having fun and interacting, then that's all that really matters. It doesn't always have to be sexual. Right. 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 So you were camming for a while. You built up a big name from camming. And then 
we met through Playboy. Yes. So tell us about that transition from camming to Playboy to where you are now. Um, so for Playboy, I people would always tell me on cam, like, I'm surprised that you don't, like, haven't been in any of the magazines or, like, any of that stuff. And I'm like, well, <laughs> have you seen me? <laughs> I don't belong in a magazine. <laughs> Ew. And so they kept, like, my fans kept pushing me to, like, try it. And then um, I guess it was uh, AVN of 2017. I was in Vegas a little early for AVN. And uh, they had a Playboy casting call in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And so my fans told me about it. And they're like, you should just go. Just, like, try. Just, like, try to do it. And I was yeah. like... Okay, so I went and I just thought I totally botched it. Like I was so weird because I had never like taken photos like with other people. It was always just me doing it. And yeah. I felt like it was so awkward. Yeah. Like they're like, all right, now turn around and show your butt. And I'm like, like this. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I was like, hey, I'm not getting that call back. And then, and then they called me back and they're like, we want to shoot you. I was like, all right, so you would like to go bankrupt now? <laughs> okay, cool. Let's let's do this. And I first shot with uh, Michael Valentino, mm -hmm. and then uh, they wanted me to be the Cyber Girl of the Month, which is where I met you. Yeah, and that was super super fun. The house was like, the house was crazy. Yeah. Was where awesome. did we shoot your? Did we shoot at the Mermaid House? I is that where that video that you posted to me mm -hmm. is from? Because I can't remember the first one I did. Because there was like the yeah, walkway out back that had all the flowers. Yeah, that the went down house. to the pool. Mm -hmm. The Mermaid House. It's a really it popular nice. shooting location in yeah. Tanka Canyon. It's beautiful. Yeah, there. it was gorgeous. Yeah, that place is great. Yeah, I, that was a really nice shoot. Yeah, it was. And those breakfast burritos. Oh my god. Yeah, I remember those. <laughs> did like we the... get breakfast burritos? Yeah, Rosalinda made them. Oh, Rosalinda made them. Yeah. Oh, my makeup artist. Yeah. I remember when I first started working with her, she would always bring like treats to set. She's, she doesn't do it anymore. That's uh, fine. I haven't gotten another burrito since then. Yeah, like, it's I, fine. Whatever. It's fine. Whatever. I know you have like a child and like a bunch <laughs> of other shit to do, but what about my breakfast burrito? <laughs> Jesus. You think you can just show up to work and just do your job and I'm going to pay you and not bring extra shit? Oh, Jesus. Rosalinda, I'm talking to you. I know you don't listen to this podcast. <laughs> She's she's awesome. Oh, she's great. So yeah, so then you were Cyber Girl of the Month, mm -hmm. and then uh, Twisties contacted me and wanted to know if you were interested in Girl Girl. Yeah, which ironically was right after I asked you if you thought they would be interested in me. Yeah, maybe I reached out to them first. I'm not sure. It was like the AVN house party okay. in, in 2028. Right. Two, yes. Well, like we were saying before, so. <coughs> Twisties, who's owned by MindGeek, used to run Playboy Plus mm -hmm. before Playboy Enterprises took the website back under their wing. Yeah. So the people at MindGeek slash Twisties knew exactly who you were yeah. before. So I know that they were looking for girls, like popular girls from Playboy, who might consider taking the next step to do Girl Girl because they like to get um, – contract girls like early you know mm -hmm. there's value in somebody's like first yeah. girl girl or whatever well, it's like i mentioned to you i totally forgot then after i shot for playboy plus mm -hmm. twisties actually reached out to me but it was so long ago like i forgot about it at the time i was just camming all the time and making all my own stuff and like they only wanted me to do like one scene and i was like yeah. eh, it's not worth it to like fly all the way down to la like right. sorry yeah 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 but then uh, – and then they offered you a contract, mm -hmm. and I shot your first girl, girl. Yes, with Izzy Lush. Yes, with yeah. Izzy Lush. And I remember it was tricky because we had to blow bubbles, and, and was, there was – it was so windy. It was so windy. It was so windy, and they had all these shots where they wanted, like, the bubbles to, like, Be touch, just perfect. And yeah, like, and, like, touch your skin. I think she was supposed to blow – I think she was or you were supposed to blow bubbles on the other girl's vagina. Yeah. And it was supposed to, like, be, like, this good. really <laughs> – well, <laughs> these writers don't necessarily – they haven't necessarily practiced what they're writing. <laughs> and so I think it was supposed to be the – and I can see the shot in my head. Like you blow the mm -hmm. bubbles and, and it's, it's like, like the slow-mo and it pops on the clitoris it's so and it's so beautiful. But it was so windy that it just went like – like And then at this. some point we're just like blowing bubble juice like on and it's like yeah. this isn't – And then the hair is in the face try. and yeah, that didn't uh... – The scene came out super well though. Everybody really liked it. Yeah. Yeah, it did. And then, oh, God, and then the sun was going. God, I, I just remember a lot of logistical yes, issues with were. that day, and I was, like, tripping. Because <laughs> also, too, Twisties came to set that day. Yeah, Which I they never that. do. Mm -hmm. And so I was, like, I was, like, and, of course, it was the day that, like, none of the shots that they wanted worked. Yeah. I was, like, fuck. 
But it was also good too because it was nice that they could see that like I was trying. Yeah, you were trying everything. The but, like, weather you can't always control how I, these things come out. I can't control the wind. I can't control the weather. All I the can't best control when the sun comes down. Like I can't control those things. So it was like, but anyways, I'm a, they're a lot more relaxed. I don't even think they're more relaxed. I think I took everything way much to heart before because mm-hmm. this is also too when they were shit because you were the first so when we made you twisty's treat of the month mm-hmm. you were the first girl in this new like vision that they had mm-hmm. so they flew me down to montreal and they're like okay we have this new vision for twisties we're we're moving it in this direction it's going to be girl girl only we're going to put more money into production like we're going to have this whole like specific plan out where every treat of the month is only going to have one video and one photo set, but it's going to be different looks all intertwined. Mm -hmm. And so it was this whole new thing. So, um, you know, I was very nervous about wanting to make sure that I like got what they wanted because I knew they were putting a lot of, of faith in me. Yeah. The treat of the month shoot was awesome. Yeah. So So that, that was great, but there was also logistical difficulties there because they wanted you in latex, which is very expensive and, not always easy to find and often needs to be custom made yeah. for people. Mm-hmm. So thankfully, shout out to Masumi Max and the latex store for coming through for me. I bought that same dress. Oh, yeah? Because mm-hmm, I liked it so much. Yeah. yeah. I bought it recently. And then um, they sent me um, uh, a little red dress that's really pretty, like, for free. Mm-hmm. Oh, and cool. I've been wanting to, like, put it on and take photos in it, but it doesn't fit right. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, ah. No. Yeah, that's the thing. Like latex is one of those things that either like fits you yeah. or it doesn't. That's why a lot of fetish models who sh- wear a lot of latex, they have that stuff custom made, yeah. which is very expensive. Like I can tell it would be time. so cute too. And I'm just like, yeah. oh, I need to change myself so I can wear this. No, no, you could just get a, d- <laughs> a different dress. But yeah, it's just one of those things where latex is it's amazing when it's on, but it's it's tricky. Oh, yeah. And it was very cold that day. Mm-hmm. You were freezing, but yes. you were so great. But we made it work. Yeah. It was good. You were really, you were a trooper about it. Speaking of difficult shoots, let's talk about yesterday, by the way, which was actually more like hilarious than difficult. <laughs> oh my gosh. So Twizzy has this new series that they have me doing about like angel roommates in heaven. And Molly is the, is the star. She's the new arrival. And she dies and wakes up in this, like, heaven roommate house. Would you like to tell everybody how you die? Yeah. Um, I died from masturbating. Well, technically, it was the cucumber allergy that killed me. <laughs> but, you know. So, yeah. So, she masturbates with the cucumber. And somehow – how old are you? I'm 28. So, through her 28 years of life, I've never eaten she's a cucumber. never eaten a cucumber. And had no idea that she had this deathly <laughs> – and then oh, I was just like, well, it. why don't I just put this in my vagina and see what happens? It sounds like a great and idea. And she dies. <laughs> Clearly, this is like a funny, like, campy It was very skit. campy. But yeah, it it's fun. not meant to be serious. Oh, yeah. Um, so that, so that when, I, when I read that, I was like, okay, I know what kind of movie this is going to be. Or a series, actually. It's their first – one of their first series. So uh, now, logistically, for me, it's tricky because everybody's wearing angel wings. Molly's the only one who's not wearing angel wings because she's actually – fucking her way through the house you have to, to get her angel way wings. to the top that's how it goes exactly you gotta you gotta show that you can fuck a woman into her grave mm-hmm. is that what that yes. was one of the lines i have to prove to be good at fucking yeah. i think was in the plot summary and then that is say like the plot and then and then they, and then bone, they bone in the, in the bedroom, bedroom. <laughs> like what am i boning with like this is a lesbian site right <laughs> It was just funny because clearly it was like, oh yeah, it's just, as I'm saying, like hilarious. written in a very campy, funny way. Yeah. But shooting girls with angel wings is tricky. Oh yeah, it is very tricky. And yesterday it was you and Abigail Mac, and that was easier because Abigail was the only one wearing mm-hmm. angel wings. But the day before was with Demi Sutra mm-hmm. and Desiree Dulce, who both had wings. Who both had wings. So that was trickier it was but we still made it work i think it i think it came out really I, well. oh it came out amazing um and you and i have had experience with angel wings because oh, yes. we also shot another with scene for twisties lyra law with lyra is it, law it's yeah. a lyra lyra oh don't get me started on name pronunciation <laughs> i don't again. either that's why i'm like i'm probably saying it wrong <laughs> i love you lyra lyra uh, I, if think you're listening. Lyra. <laughs> <laughs> I think so too but um I'm confused. Um, so yeah, so we have experience with shooting with angel wings. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it can be tricky, but it ended up looking out great. It, yeah, it did. It came out well. 
And I how was it. shooting with Abigail yesterday? Because I know that was your first oh time. Oh, my God. I've wanted to shoot with her for so long, and I love her. She's so weird, and I'm so weird, and it just worked out really well. But it's, like, the best kind because she's just obviously such a confident woman. Mm-hmm. Like, she's sexy. She's she's just pretty, and she's just so nice. Mm-hmm. Like, it was just a great experience. Like, it was just laughter like the whole day. Yeah. It was great. She's really great, and she's really authentic, and she yeah. actually genuinely cares about and other she people. she eats pussy so well. <laughs> like, it, it's no hate, but, like, some girls, you can just tell that they're not into it. Yeah. Like, when I show up, like, I like eating pussy. Mm-hmm. Like, I like giving pleasure to other people. So if I can show up on set and make that happen, that's awesome. But, like, you... Some girls eat pussy like they're tasting something bad <laughs> that they're being forced to taste. Like, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> okay, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Because you gotta still like, pretend. you gotta sell it. <laughs> and then there was this one female performer that does a lot of girl girl who, like, everybody in the industry knows, just doesn't she doesn't like girls, and we're, yep. of course we're not gonna call her out. But she she licks what the side of your vagina, mm-hmm. so like you can't even do close ups really because no. it's like obvious that she's not yeah. doing it. I mean, I get it, you know. If you're not into girls, you're not into girls. But if you're like not into girls, do then something... maybe don't do girl girl. Right. <laughs> like, it's okay. But, but like... there's that weird stigma where it's like more acceptable to do girl girl than boy girl, which is ridiculous. Which is ridiculous. Honestly, yeah. I mean, the, the stigma around all sex workers is stupid. Yeah, of course. There's like layers. Yeah, of it's stigma. weird layers, but it's funny because like some of those layers aren't the same for like other people. So it's mm-hmm. like no matter what you're doing, whether you're a non-nude cam model who just yeah. like wears laundry or something, all the way up to like maybe like a Twitch streamer who yeah. has big cleavage, like. Yeah. So many people have different levels of, like, what's acceptable. And mm-hmm. people should just mind their own fucking business. Like, yeah. it's not you. It's not affecting you. Just, yeah. like, let it go. What's the big deal? Yeah. I, people can't. Well, you know, people always project their own, like, sexual hangups onto other people. Mm-hmm. So, it, and nobody sees that more than cam girls, porn stars, anybody basically involved yeah. in sex work People whatsoever. should just have sex and masturbate and be comfortable with it because we're all born naked and we I are. plan to die naked. We so, are. Though in the scene yesterday, you Died in a beautiful white dress. I was buried in a beautiful oh, dress. Oh, that's true. Oh, I you totally definitely died, died naked, naked I was because you were masturbating. Who masturbates with their clothes on? Holly. I get fully naked, like to go to the bathroom, like to masturbate, like to make coffee. I just like to be naked. We had this conversation. Like, I'm uncomfortable because <laughs> I'm wearing clothes. And I'm like, yeah. Molly's like, can I please take my clothes off? This is really awkward for me. <laughs> It's like, unfortunately, YouTube will ban me. Yeah, but uh, it's okay. It's, it's safe for work. Yeah, safe for work. I like my Instagram. <laughs> Another thing that you've lost many times. Many times. This one, I'm just. Yeah, I know. It's tricky. Instagram really doesn't like yeah. people in the adult industry. No, they don't. Which is like ridiculous because you have like Cardi B like showing other girls titties and shit like that on yeah. her Instagram story. But like we post in a sweater and they're like, hmm. Shame, shame. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's terrible. Oh, my this God. Don't get me started. Whatever. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and then we're going to come back. We have some more. We're going to talk about your stalker experience, Ooh, which is kind of crazy and scary. And creepy. Um, what dating is like in the industry. And um, what are my other notes? Uh, oh, I got with some other things. We'll see what we get to. We'll see what we get to. We'll be right back. Are you a fan of my podcast, Holly Randall Unfiltered? Of course you are. Well, I need your help to keep this show going. This is why I've set up a Patreon account where you can donate to support my show. And in exchange, you can be eligible for all kinds of cool, fun perks and prizes, which include autographed DVDs and books. See, guys, she's actually signing shit. Free membership passwords to my website, hollyrandall.com. Free mugs, pens, shirts, bags, all kinds of really cool stuff. So take care of me and I will take care of you. I will not only be able to continue to produce this podcast with really awesome, inspiring content about your favorite adult stars, but I will also give back to you in terms of all the cool, fun perks and prizes that we offer. So please, please support me at patreon.com slash Unfiltered. And thank you guys so much for your support. I could not do this without you. All right, so we're back. So the adult industry is not always fun and games. It doesn't always attract people with healthy boundaries. 
and you experienced a pretty crazy stalker experience that I you actually wrote an article about, right? Mm-hmm. For XBiz. Yeah, and I think cam girls tend to be subject to more stalker experiences because the viewers feel a more personal connection with them just because of the nature of the job. Yes. So can you tell us about what happened to you? I think that especially with cam, like like you said, like there's always that more personal interaction. And for a lot of people who are especially like consistent webcam models, you're typically there every day. Mm-hmm. You, you may take a couple of days off here and there, but these are people who um, – They see you every day. They talk to you every day. Um, Once you, like, can feel like you can build up a point where you can trust them, like, sometimes you'll give them, like, they'll tip you for, like, your phone number or your Snapchat. And then there's just all the different social media. Like, so no matter even if you're online or not, they always have access to you in Mm -hmm. some way or another. It's it's kind of – I've described it before as, like, having, like – hundreds of like different boyfriends <laughs> like but that you don't like oh God, just do anything with. Exhausted I know <laughs> <laughs> but it's like I think that that can breed this level of like dependency on their side whether you feel that way or not um because like for for us we show up and and it's a job and I have I have friends that I've made but there's there's always has there always has to be that separation. And that's what I have always made very clear. Like this is my job. Like we can be friends and friendly, but like it doesn't go further than that. I'm not here to to date anyone or to fuck anyone. I'm not gonna marry any of you. Like I don't reach into your wallet. I don't swipe your credit card. I don't make you do anything. You can make me do things with mm-hmm. your tips, but only what I'm comfortable with. Right. And I think, but you're, exactly. You're still setting boundaries. With but that. I think that there's always that mentality, especially with the people who spend a lot of money and time mm-hmm. on the site. There's one thing for just spending time, but there's another when there's there's money involved, mm-hmm. especially to the level that this particular individual had with me. Um, if I if I just give her this that she wanted, if I just tip this, if I if I if I spend this amount, then then maybe she'll change her mind. Maybe she'll want me. It, and they, they lose the point where they can hear what you're saying and they just put in what they want to hear mm-hmm. because they think, well, I have I have this power over her because I've made her do this for this amount of money before I've made her do this. Like, And it becomes this level of like control. Mm-hmm. And once you recognize that as a cam model, like, oh, this person, like I have literally changed who I am as a performer to basically continue – having that level of contribution, mm-hmm. I guess, because it's like it can get to a point where like you you don't reply to to a message or like a text or something or you you tell them off for something that made you uncomfortable. Then they'll start to like withhold um yeah. tokens and stuff like that, which considering it's your job, like that's that's what you rely on. Yeah. So it's it's hard to have that separation to be like I have to be my own person and I have to really set these boundaries and make sure that they understand. And at some point, if you've set those boundaries and they, they continue to cross them, you have to cut them off. Mm -hmm. But once they don't have that object of their obsession, Mm -hmm. I guess they lash out. So that's, that's what happened in this particular situation. Um, I had, uh, he bought my legal name, off of a cam girl that I had worked with back when I wasn't aware of the fact that you you really can't even trust the people that you work with, wow. you know? I hear a lot about this because, you know, one of my really good friends is Bailey Rain, who cams a lot, and, like, some of the backstabbing yeah. that ha- and the betrayal fr- by cam girls to other cam girls is, like, yeah, really it, brutal. And it's ridiculous, and it's not something that I ever thought would happen. And like I like I mentioned, I was homeschooled, so I, I never really had, like, a lot of friends. And then especially going into a job that kind of alienates you from um, vanilla civilians, Mm -hmm. you know, like I had told friends in the past, like, oh, I'm a webcam girl. And they just like stopped talking to me. And it's Mm -hmm. like, you don't even know like what it is, but you chose to, you know, whatever. So I thought, well, I can make friends with people who are in my job because we all understand like members can be scary. We can understand that it's hard to like do all these things and um and I guess I was just far too trusting because I was young and naive and I had no idea. Um, he found one of the addresses that I lived at in California um, by doing image searches, I guess. And he found the original listing for the rental um, like on Zillow and like all this kind of stuff. And it was just really 
uncomfortable and weird. But did he show up there, or did he, he didn't, like he didn't show up there? But no. he sent he let you but know that he knew where he, you lived. He let one of my other members know. Oh. who ended up showing me, like, the messages and was like, he said he found it by accident. And I'm like... No, I don't think so. But he was also my big tipper. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't really address it. And I was moving anyway, so I was just like, oh, well, you know, maybe it was an accident. And I just, like, let myself convince that. And I was right. like, every little thing that he did, whether it was, like, saying something degrading or um, he would say degrading things about the other girls that I worked with or be like, it got to the point where he used to be normal. And then it was like, I don't even want you doing girl, girl shows anymore. Like they're not attractive to me. And I I get jealous seeing you with other people and all this kind of stuff. And I started to let him kind of dictate what I did in my shows as well as my own life. And it was driving me like nuts. Like I had like a mental breakdown and I was finally like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Like this isn't, I'm not comfortable. Like, you're doing these things purposefully to try to basically hurt me mm-hmm. and I'm not okay with it anymore. And, uh, um, he kind of just went off the wall and that was, uh, AVN 2018. And then, uh, AVN 2019, I had a roommate when I first moved down to Vegas and I can't, we kind of had a falling out, which makes me sad, but I can't think of any other way that the same stalker would have gotten that address of that rental. And I'm not saying that she did it. I'm really not. I'm not even going to say her name because I don't know. But I just, at the time, I couldn't think of any other way that he could have found that, you know. And uh, uh, a Twitter account popped up during AVN um, with the picture of the avatar as the front of my rental um, was posting um, the exact address telling people that I had a a rape fantasy and I wanted people to break into my house and have sex with me, that I'd be having like an orgy party and just like come by like at any time and all this crazy stuff. Oh my God. Yeah. So I actually flew one of my friends down from Washington to kind of like stay with me and like walk around the convention and stuff with me because I was terrified and I didn't know what to do. And I had contacted the cops uh, previously, but he's in a different state um, and they couldn't do anything without arresting him. And it was an anonymous account. And Twitter doesn't release records like that. So mm-hmm. there was really no way to effectively protect myself. They, the cops went to his house and they gave him a warning, but that's all that they could do. And, um, you know, it's it was one of the gripes that I also had with MFC at the time because I showed them the police reports. I showed them the accounts. Um, w- tr- things were traced back to his member account and they they wouldn't ban him. They were like, it's a he said, she said kind of thing because wow. you don't actually have physical proof. And I'm like... But look at all the messages that he sent. Look how that correlates to like what's being done. And yeah. they wouldn't do anything. And um, that was at the time that I, I wanted to take a break from camming. So when I reached out to you about, you know, doing twisties, I wasn't going to quit camming. And I I, I won't. But um, I needed to have that that mental break away from of the course. stress of the members. That makes a lot there, of sense. There were other members who were also um, just like mentally abusive things that I like didn't even realize were happening until I basically had that breakdown. Right. And I was just like, I can't, I can't do this. Like, this is not even who I am anymore. Like I shouldn't be letting these people affect me just because they're paying me. Mm -hmm. Like it, it it shouldn't work like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, but then like when Twisties offered me that contract, I was like, this is exactly what I need right now. Like I'll still be able to make money. I can still cam casually and not have to have as big of a focus on there because there was always this drama coming through like in the chat rooms, like about like, oh, you're like a whore. I would get messages telling me I should like kill myself and all this crazy shit. And I mean, I just, I couldn't deal with it. So yeah. camming is very isolating. So especially when you don't really feel that you can trust anybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, you spend all that time like in front of a computer screen, like in your bedroom day in, day out, even shooting content like from home. Like there was not much social interaction whatsoever. Um, So getting into uh, professionally shooting instead of just shooting at my house was so much better for me because I I met so many people who basically have become really close friends of mine. One of my best friends in the industry is Marco Cervera. Uh, We do a lot of work together together. I'm actually living with him right now, which is convenient because we can just shoot all the time. And, yeah, that's cool. you know, if I if I do get down or whatever, he's like, like, just get your ass in front of the camera, like make yourself feel pretty. I'll make you look pretty. You'll feel better. Like, let's yeah. freaking do this, you know. And um, he actually worked with me on my first uh, big feature film as well. So um, but I've just met so many um, great producers and talent that have just become really close. And now I actually have people that I can 
talk to Mm -hmm. and that I can hang out with and that there's more than just me and a computer. Yeah. And I don't have to worry that, oh, this person said this about me online and like, oh, and and this and this and this and just be worried about what these faceless people are saying about me. Because even if I get like upset, like I have people that I can talk to about it. Right. Instead of just like letting it feed into my own insecurities. Yeah. And and they can bring you back into the real world and be like, these people are not not real. They're not real. Yeah. Like they just, they give you money and they're dicks online because they have small dicks or whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 So, I mean, it's, it's been a really great experience and just shooting professionally in general has helped um, me improve my own content as well. Mm-hmm. And it's given me a lot more confidence to be like, oh, hey, look, I can actually like, I, I actually do have social skills. Mm-hmm. I, I can talk to people. Like, yeah. Oh, wow. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. You know, this is a really interesting different perspective for me because I have so many girls on and we talk about how the industry has changed so much and has put the power of content creation in the hands of the performer and Mm -hmm. how camming has empowered women and allowed them to, you know, basically be their own business. But I never thought about how it could turn into a situation where men could still control you, but like Mm -hmm. in a completely different way. way. And it's something that you have to like be aware of, especially if you've never done it before. But Mm -hmm. even people have been doing it for a long time. They don't necessarily realize like because I'm not the kind of person like and I never have been that would normally let like something like that that happened progress so far. Mm -hmm. But if especially it's something that can be really gradual that you don't really if you don't know the signs to look for, you don't see it until Mm -hmm. it's like exploding in your face. Yeah. And so I think that people just need to be really careful um, and maybe more, I wouldn't necessarily even say guarded, but just aware yeah. of the way that people Aware of the behave. signs yeah. of like that kind of psychological manipulation. You, you have to have a point where you have to say like, is the money worth it? Yeah. Is it is it worth my own mental stability and happiness? Mm-hmm. Like is, is that going to like be fine? Are you going to be okay with like letting someone make you feel like that who you don't even know who right. just pays you to like be their – their sex object, which I'm fine being like, I'm fine being right. paid, but, I'm but on your own let, terms. Exactly. And I'm not going to let somebody who sees that only that value of me affect how I feel about myself mm-hmm. because I let that happen for far too long. And it put me in like a really, really dark place. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. I feel like it's something that everybody goes through in one mm-hmm. way or another. I mean, I had a horrible, horrible boyfriend when I was like 22 that was uh, like, uh, 11, 12 years older than me that just treated me so badly. I mean, he was never physically abusive, but like the mental abuse and the manipulation and everything. And, and I look back at it now and I'm like, how did I let someone treat me like that? That's so crazy. But I needed that experience to realize that that's not okay. You know, it's like you have to go through those really trying times in order to recognize what your boundaries are and how to avoid that. You know, life is never like life life is never easy. And it's all the the trials that we go through that help us develop as people. So Mm -hmm. like all the bad things that have happened in my past and are still happening, I am thankful for them because it makes me the person who I am and I'm, I'm happy with who I am now. And I wasn't for a very long time. So I think that it's a lot of um, self-realization, like what what do I want out of life? What's going to to make me happy? And how can I avoid and cut out the things in my life that are no longer contributing to that? Right. Because you can't – something could have perhaps brought you happiness at one point or made you feel secure or good. But those things, everything in life changes. What doesn't change stagnates. Mm-hmm. So if you still have that thing – and it's something that's wearing you down. You need to realize when it's time to just cut your losses and be like, this isn't working for me anymore. And yeah. I, I need to move on for myself. Right. Yeah, that's really great that you've come to that realization. And I've heard you talk about other like more personal things that are going on in your life. And the way that you have like a really – I feel like you have a really good perspective when it comes to things. Like you seem to be somebody who recognizes that there's only certain things in your life in the world that you can control yep. and the things that you can't control, you need to let go of because otherwise yeah. it just, it just poisons you. It does. The only thing in life that you can control is yourself. Yeah. 
And Your reaction it's something to that I realized far too late in my life, but <laughs> that's the only thing that you can control. And if things will grow and change with you, then that's great. But right. if they don't, then it's something that's just going to be like this little toxic spot that just keeps growing inside of you until you're just full of hate and regret and mm-hmm. anger. Mm-hmm. And that will just kill you. <laughs> yeah. They say, what do they say? Like resentment is like drinking poison and hoping the other person dies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that's a very, very good saying. So how did this whole stalker situation end? Like how did he, I'm assuming he's not stalking you anymore. I don't know. I just kind of like stopped. <laughs> Every time an account would pop up, like I, for a long time, I think I kind of fed into it because I let it like bother me. And well, it's terrifying. It He's is. posting your address and telling people that you have a rape fantasy. Yeah. Like it's hard to ignore those things. It is terrifying. But I did buy a house um, and it has two guard gates and roaming security. And I made a point to tell everybody that mm. when I bought my house, like, right. hey, you can come find me, but there's guards. I'll get you. Yeah. And if you show up at my house, I'll cut off your dick. Yeah. So I think that kind of like helps stem some things. And then I just kind of stopped addressing all of the trolls. If I saw one, like I, I'm a very aggressive person. Like I just want to fight when I see something that makes yeah. me mad. Yeah. So I started just like blocking them or muting them and just like moving on. Yeah. And it's like once once they don't – what what people like that want is your reaction. Mm-hmm. So if you take away the thing that they're after – they can keep trying for a while, but eventually it loses its luster because all they want is your attention. Mm-hmm. So if you take that away in whatever form that is, I mean, there's nothing left. Then you're just wasting your time. Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. These people are starved for attention yes. and anything they can get negative attention, anything like mm-hmm. that. That's that's what they want. Yep. It's it's pretty crazy. Yeah. So you kind of briefly talked about um, this featurette that mm-hmm. you shot, which I know was nominated for an AVN Award, Stepsisters, that you yeah. did with Ella Silver. Yes. And then you said Marcos shot it. Mm-hmm. And it's a parody from Step Brothers, yes. right? Which sounds pretty hilarious. I love it. I should send it to you. <laughs> you should send it to me. It's actually really funny because there's... My boyfriend loves the movie Step Brothers, so he would probably really enjoy it. It was, yeah. a, it was a featurette because there was only like... There's like a, a solo scene, a girl girl scene, and then a softcore boy girl scene. Mm-hmm. Um, softcore boy. Did people get really mad about that because they like thought you were finally doing boy girl and then like you weren't and then they were? When pissed. I send this to you and you see my scene with Charles Dara, oh, you Charles might Dara. pee your pants. I love Charles Dara. Nobody so on earth <laughs> masturbated to my boy girl softcore in that at all whatsoever and if you did you have some serious mental issues <laughs> like, it was so uncomfortable like it took us so long to shoot like it what happened was I didn't even know that I was gonna put one in but then when I was doing all the editing and stringing all the scenes together I was like this isn't quite enough like time and length mm-hmm. Like, I want to do something, like, ridiculous. Like, I want it to be in line because the whole movie is it's just hilarious. Like, it's mm-hmm. funny. It's not supposed to be taken seriously. And I was like, who can I get to pretend to fuck me? Hmm. Fucking Charles Dara. Yeah. Like, when I first met him, like, he just had me cracking up. I met him. He's so great. And we did, like, a a Western, and he was, like, a sheriff or something. And he just was, like, making me cry laughing, dude. He's so funny. And so I reached out to him, and he literally, like – flew out like two days after I asked him like last minute he's like fuck yeah like let's fucking shoot this like I was like what do you want me to pay you he's like I'm like well like you have to tell me something he's like he's like nah man like money is just a thing like you know fuck the system (laughs) I was like what money so actually (laughs) not to bring it back to my podcast but if you guys go listen to my episode with Charles Dara which was very early it was in like I think it's like episode number three he actually talks about how this whole experience that he had where he quit porn for a while and went back to train jujitsu. He told me about it. Yeah. That. And did he tell you about like how he became really poor and how yeah, it was like the just, best like, experience lived, for yeah, him he just, ever? Like, lived off of like the charity of others and like just working for stuff. And yeah. Like, yeah so crazy. I think that brought him a very unique perspective that a lot of us don't have. Yeah. So I just want to. He's like, one of like the, my favorite people that I've oh, met he's in fantastic. the industry. He's great. Him. But so it was absolutely ridiculous. And we were just all cracking up like the entire way through it. And like I had written out like a, like a funny script But we were all having so much fun that we just kept, like, pushing it Mm -hmm. and pushing, like, how can we make this more ridiculous? Yeah. (laughs) And it it was just – it was so freaking funny. Like, everyone that saw it, even the fans who had hang-ups about the fact that I said I shot a scene with Charles Dara, Mm -hmm. like, some of them were getting kind of, like, bitchy about it. They're like, a scene with a guy. 
Oh my name. Yeah. And then I'm like, another just, example I'm of like, how like your fans think they own oh, you yeah. and your body and your choices. Yeah. And I'm like, just watch it. And they were like, this is the funniest shit that I have ever seen in a porn. <laughs> like, it's, it's ridiculous. I got to rub shaving cream all over him and his giant hanging balls. <laughs> and it was just, I don't know. You'll just have to see it. <laughs> yeah, I will have to see it. That's a, one of the wonderful things about shooting porn is that because there's still such a huge market for it and because you don't need to spend $2 million mm-hmm. making you know, a movie because you don't need a crew of 30 people yeah. and all this ridiculousness that mainstream does, yeah. you really have the opportunity, especially if you have a fan base like yours, people who are just – excited for any content of you you can really like make whatever you want yeah it's and it can be stupid yes and And so much fun and people will like it because it's different yeah and they like it because like like i'm weird okay and here's the thing like when i was a kid i actually had a lisp i had to go to speech therapy for like two years oh wow and um my character for like the first half of the movie has a lisp and my hair looks like shit and I'm wearing like the ugliest clothes whatsoever and like these giant glasses and like I think they like to see me as just like like I'm always like oh my god I'm so like glammed up and pretty yeah. set, and I just look like shit yeah <laughs> And it was so much fun. Like, it was just, it was amazing from start to finish. And we shot it in only two days, which was ridiculous. We were shooting, like, 10 o'clock in the morning until, like, 10.30 at night. Mm-hmm. Like, it was it was just wild. But it was a great experience. And it kind of, like, l- let me in on the little secrets of what I have to do in the future for, like, something of that level. And yeah. it helped me, like, block stuff out for the next film I shot, which was because scheduling is everything. Oh yeah, when you're doing something like that. Yeah, it helped me out when I shot the, my my shorter film with uh, Alex Cole and Xander Corvus, um, and it was just really fun with that. And it's just so fun to be creative and have these ideas. And like I got so blocked into for a little while, thinking like everything has to be different and individual. And then um, uh, I was going over scene ideas with Marcos, and we were talking about. Um, like new content to shoot. And I'm like, I just, I feel like I'm dry. Like I'm devoid of ideas right Mm -hmm. now. And he's like, well, why don't you just make it like a continuation of your, of your vampire thing? Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh my God. So we can just like turn this into like a little mini series and just like keep turning more vampires and having vampire sex. Okay. Amazing. (laughs) You can do whatever you want. Yeah. And it's, it's funny because I always want everything to be just like different. And uh, and I get locked into thinking like, Mm -hmm. you're so uncreative and everyone hates you. Just kill yourself. (laughs) 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 but there's so much more out there than I think people think and it's it's fun to be able to just like express all these ideas and just kind of like see it come out and see people's reaction to the Mm -hmm. stuff that you make and that's why I want to definitely get more into uh, producing and directing in the future so yeah yeah it's a lot of fun especially when uh, people give you angel wings to shoot with (laughs) challenges hey challenges I welcome I welcome them all (laughs) All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Molly. This was really fun. Um, do you mind hanging around for like 10 minutes afterwards? We can do like a quick Q&A for my Patreon members because people actually sent me questions for you. Yeah, that's totally fine. And I'll do that as a bonus for my for my Patreon members. So if you're not a member of my Patreon, you should join <laughs> patreon.com slash Holly Randall and filtered support this podcast. Listen to extra exclusive stuff with this beautiful lady right here. Um, but before we sign off on this uh, episode, can you tell everybody where they can find you on social? media um you can find me on instagram at this redhead is sfw hoping i don't get banned and on twitter at call me miss molly perfect and you guys as always can follow me on instagram at holly randall twitter at holly randall don't forget i have a facebook page facebook.com slash group slash holly randall and filtered and of course my youtube channel which by the way recently hit uh two million views a month which is so crazy so thank you to everybody who visits me there um and subscribe because um that that is i update it all the time like at least three times a week so i'm hopefully gonna get monetized (laughs) soon which sucks for you guys because then you're gonna see ads but it's better for me because then i make more money yes yes i need more money (laughs) okay (laughs) um so that's youtube.com slash holly randall i'm filtered by the way Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next week.